Herman Melville tells of a whole string of incidents in the book Moby Dick where a whale team already dedicated to hunting down those migratory cetaceans decided it was not happy about being hunted itself by man, and instead attacked their boats or even their ships. We know that Moby Dick's author used the tale of an earlier white whale slaughter, a sperm whale attack on a ship named Essex, and melded it with another true story from the same time period about yet one more giant albino in this case, appropriately named Mocha Dick. Melville, though, also carves out a few lines to mention an altogether older horror that supposedly reared its scaly head in the 6th century AD. Porphyrios, a sea serpent whose depredations caused Byzantine mariners so much distress and ships to sink as quickly at their mornings that it had even raised alarms with Emperor Justinian. As was stated in the original text, our clearest account of an attack from Porphyrios comes from Procopius of Caesarea, a historian whose works are key to knowing anything about Justinian. He referred multiple times and distinctively described that beast, calling it a whale, both in History of the Wars as well as his less trustworthy Secret History, one such example given those proportions, 45 feet by 15 feet according at least to him. Concerning the kind of whale that it is identified with, as Melville writes, for there are some things here in this compassionable world which cannot be adequately described by anyone but Truth herself. All these prodigies, Ahab at sea ranks, Ahab ashore, but what Procopius tells us about a seaborne monster much less does he say, for all verifiable nautical thesauri and marine school books are silent on all points touching whales, whether it was animal or fish, male or female but we have good reason to believe, particularly if, like me, you know phylogy beyond Herodotus's age and Philolos offhand, that baleen creature called Grampus translates into a huge spermacetic whale, the sperm whale. In the end, in reality it is not confirmed, nor is there any reason to decide which species it was. Some modern scholars suggest that this might be an orca, because it is often found in the Mediterranean but the size mentioned by Procopius is not even close to fitting the orca. Males of this species can grow to 8 meters and females and calves are even smaller. Thus the more widespread opinion is that Porphyrios is a sperm whale, a marine mammal that can grow to more than 20 meters in length and weigh over 50 tons, enough to have the courage to enter into battle with ships. In fact, as mentioned a little earlier, there are many stories that sperm whales, feeling too much attention or having to protect the calf, ram their huge heads through the hulls of chasing ships, a third of their body length. Once, for one reason or another, they thought sperm whales were attacking them. Sperm whales live in pods, thus they have no reason to be afraid of predators, even though orcas and sharks can attack a sickly young or full-grown individuals. However, in order to break the so-called marguerite formation, the assistivum, where the cetaceans then surround the vulnerable individual to protect him, a lot of them need to come together. The fact that Procopius says that this whale was eating dolphins goes against the idea that this was a sperm whale, although it could be an embellishment of the story, or it could have been a mistake in the observation that they were more often observed swimming together. Sperm whales do not swim in the eastern Mediterranean at all. They can be found in the east, but most of the sinking of the ships that Procopius mentions was in the eastern Mediterranean. The proposed theses can be contested in the following passage from Moby Dick. For a long time I fancied that the sperm whale had been always unknown in the Mediterranean and the deep waters connecting with it. Even now I am certain that those seas are not, and perhaps never can be, in the present constitution of things, a place for this habitual gregarious resort. But further investigations have recently proved to me that in modern times there have been isolated instances of the presence of the sperm whale in the Mediterranean. I am told on good authority that on the Barbary coast a Commodore Davis of the British Navy found the skeleton of a sperm whale. Now as a vessel of war readily passes through the Dardanellas and Lake, as the Sea of Memora is called, is but a continuation of the archipelago. Therefore, through the spread-out photograph of that Caesar and his tidal ship, therefore the whale would pass on his way. There's one more argument in support of this version – their age. Sperm whales are long-lived, they can live up to 70 years, and the fact is that reports of an attack on Byzantine vessels occurred for more than five decades, 
with periods of almost calm between these events because the sperm whale would sometimes disappear for a fairly long interval. Apparently, Porfirios did not differentiate. He rammed not only simple fishing vessels but also merchant and even warships, and usually this happened on the shores of the Bosphorus. It should have been visible like a parade since in addition to the sailors from the ship who patrolled this place, there were always image keepers from the shore. Such a prolific occurrence of aggressive action against ships led sailors to be frightened at the prospect and thus had some divert their sails away in what threatened imperial support for seaborne commerce or perhaps just navigation, and he sank very many boats and terrified those upon most others by appearing suddenly beside them, so that at last all sailed around his domains when they saw how great were the perils involved. Procopius. The Byzantine soldiers who went to Italy to fight the Ostrogoths as well carried protective amulets, it's known. This object was difficult to be solved since whaling dated back from ancient historical eras, and during modern age almost all the hunting activities were focused on smaller cetaceans – dolphins, belugas – and besides the Byzantines, neither have a tradition of whaling. Others bring up that Theodora hired the great general Belisarius to get rid of it. He left with 500 archers and a catapult, which implies they tried both shooting arrows at him – that should have been fun – also using heavy missiles or harpoons from flying weapons, but were unable to center their aim. This is interesting but unfortunately incorrect, as it comes from the pen of a writer, namely Robert Graves, who thought that there's an analogy between this Sophie and Porphyrios in his 1939 book Count Belisarius. Based on another classic text by Procopius, just as his famous I Claudius and Claudius the God are based upon Suetonius's The Lives of the Twelve Caesars. It is closer to Graves who speculates that Porphyrios might have been an orca on a vendetta against fishermen, a plot inspired by the 1977 movie Orca starring Richard Harris, also known as Orca the Killer Whale. Curiously, from the year 2020 on, there have been recorded about 50 cases of aggression by orcas against boats near the Strait of Gibraltar and Spanish Levant, excluding trawling interactions. Experts explain these cases with two hypotheses. The aversion situation, a negative experience involving a boat motivates an animal to seek out others, and self-induced behavior, that is, play. The actual Porphyrius, in any event, went on to enhance his scurrilous reputation over the years until he'd attracted enough Byzantine haters, a tradition through whom even the most monstrous of quadrupedal mammalian also will make a homecoming back for centuries. We discussed Mocha, Dick, and others. What's interesting about the chosen name, though, is that we're not exactly sure where these cause and why stories have come from. Porphyrios is thought to be a nod either to Porphyrius Calliopus, another premier chariot driver of antiquity and again the best-known one at the time period, or else Porphyrio, a mythical giant son of Gaia who began battle against other deities before being felled by Zeus's thunderbolt. The name Porphyrios, on the other hand, most scholars agree it's derived from Porphyria, the color purple, perhaps in reference to Porphyri being the appropriate shade for imperial clothing, or maybe even due to what may have been a coloration of those animals. As for the latter, sperm whales are naturally gray and orcas are black and white, yet depending on which way they were facing with respect to sunlight could easily have made them appear dark reddish or some shade of red, at least during certain hours. The literal translation of the name is Purple Child, a meaning that has been recently dismissed. The most important thing of this all is that, even after Edward Gibbon implied its extraordinary size and location might mean it wasn't real but rather just a metaphor, Porphyrios was the first time someone documented proof of a whale attacking human beings, not counting Jonah in the Bible. We witnessed this behavior of repeating the one and same thing over again getting repeated a number of times without anyone stopping it. Then what became of Porphyrios and his uncontrollable wrath? Sadly, it came to a bad end. I'll let Procopius tell the story. Several of them saw the whale and ran, almost all off every which way, but most near the mouth of Sangarius. The whale, meanwhile, slurped up a few what happened to catch and began swallowing them whole. Mora may have been driven by hunger or a separatist spirit, but whatever the case, it pursued just as voraciously with each stroke of its huge black talons until suddenly, and without knowing it, found itself very near land. 
It beached itself there in the mud, and although it tried mightily to get out quickly, this is a shoal where you just can't turn around easily, leading ever deeper other comers after him. But once it was discovered by all the people nearby, they instantly attacked, grinding the whale. In spite of ceaseless hacking as they swarmed up those vines to the very last individual for a moment from life. Instead, they dragged it up with heavy ropes, even though just ten more feet of length and four cubits ahead in the rock, there was a space to pull the megalith out easily, put her on makeshift carts, whose weight must have exceeded three rough stones. Time passed by. They then grouped in teams before dividing the whale. Some immediately consumed part of it, while others decided to preserve their peace. <laughs>